Hello and welcome back to Art Bytes. Today we are going to be looking at the visual element of form. Form refers to three-dimensional objects. So whilst shapes have two dimensions, height and width, forms have three dimensions, height, width and depth. Forms that are three-dimensional are the things we'd normally think of as form. So sculptures or buildings. Now these can be created in a variety of different materials. Materials such as clay or stone or iron, you can use almost anything to create sculpture. Until the emergence of modern art, when colour became its rival, form was the most important visual element in painting. This is because two-dimensional drawing and painting can suggest three-dimensional form. This is called implied form. This is created when other visual elements like line or shape or colour or tone can be used to suggest the depth required for 3D objects. To create implied forms, the two most common and simplest ways to create these forms is through line and through tone. Now, to use line, we create a sense of perspective. So taking each of my three shapes, what I'm first going to do is project lines back at an angle and I'm going to keep that angle the same so I'm going for about 45 degrees you don't need to measure it and what this allows me to do is suggest that there is depth to these objects that they go past the surface of the paper so once I've done that I can just close off then the back edges of each of these shapes when you're doing this I always suggest that you draw really lightly with your pencil to start with that way, if you make a mistake, you can change it quite easily. And once you are happy with your object, you can then go back over your lines in a heavier line to redefine the edges of that form. And you can then also rub out any lines you didn't need. So it's always a good idea to try and, if you're drawing lightly, to, you can then extend your lines as well further than you need. So our circle is slightly different. Just because it's a curved surface, so all I'm going to need to do, rather than just closing that off with a straight line, I want to try and repeat that same curve at the back. So I've done that, I can get rid of the bits I don't need, and I can then just go over those lines a little bit heavier again. So we've used line to create sort of a sense of perspective and the illusion of form, and we're going to reinforce that a bit now by starting to apply tone. Now, the most important thing when you're wanting to apply tone to create the illusion of form is to choose a light source or to work out where the light is coming from in your image. Now, when you're drawing objects with flat sides, you can draw each side as a different tone. Here, the right hand side receives most of the light, so that's going to be left completely white whereas the top will be slightly darker and the edge closest to us will be darker still. As I come down to the front side, I'm gonna work much more heavily with my pencil and start to get that really, really dark tone. If you need to remind yourselves how to apply tone effectively, here's a link to our video on tone up at the top. The cast shadow, which is this shadow that appears on the surface that this object is on, will be the opposite side to the light source and it will be the darkest at, its, at the base of that object and gradually becoming lighter. Choosing your light source is really important because light moves around objects. So if you know where the light source is coming from, you can work out where the shadows should be and where the highlights should be and that will help to create that illusion of form. The triangular prism is much the same, with one side darker than the other, and this cast shadow on the floor. Unlike forms with flat edges, curved surfaces require a different approach. 
Rather than sudden and distinct changes in tone, we make gradual changes from light to dark. This is why choosing your light source is so important. So along the sides of this cylinder where it is curved, the areas that are closer to that light source will be lighter and the areas further away will gradually become darker and darker. This kind of approach to applying tone to a form with these smooth transitions from light to dark is really useful for drawing organic forms such as people or plants because of their inherently rounded and curved surfaces. We can also create the illusion of form without using perspective at all. As before, it's important to first select the, the light source so we know where that light is coming from. Then, by following the curve of the circle as we add tone, going from light to dark again, we can start to create a sphere. Now, it might not be immediately clear why learning to draw these basic forms is so useful when learning how to draw. However, you will find objects with similar shapes to these throughout life. If you look around you right now, I can almost guarantee you will be able to spot something that is roughly either a cuboid, cylinder or sphere. And learning to draw these basic shapes will help you to draw those more complex ones in the future. Again, adding a cast shadow is an important step as it helps to trick your brain into seeing the object as though it was sat on a surface rather than floating in space. So remember, form refers to 3D objects that have height, width and depth. We can create real forms in real life, but we can also create these implied forms by using other visual elements like line and tone to suggest that depth. That's it for our video on form. If you'd like to see more of our videos, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And as always, thank you very much for watching.